Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV and welcome back to my Linux Crash Course series. In this series, I teach you a valuable Linux related skill one video at a time. And for the most part, you can watch these videos in any order. In this video in particular, what we're going to do is learn the uname command. And this is going to be one of the simpler episodes in this series. There's not really all that much to this command, but it's definitely something that you should know. So what I'll do is teach you how to use the command while going over the most basic options. And I have a feeling that this is going to be one of the shorter episodes in the series because I don't really have all that much to teach you. The uname command just isn't really all that complicated. What I'll do is give you the most common examples in this video, so that way you can write down the most common examples and add them as part of your tool set. But before I get to that though, I do need to make you aware of the fact that the official merch shop for Learn Linux TV has just been updated with brand new products. Inside the shop, you'll find distro themed shirts, bags, drinkware, and more. And there's some other surprises there as well. For example, I've just introduced a mouse pad that doubles as a Tmux cheat sheet. How cool is that? So check out the shop at merch.learnlinux.tv or you could check out the merch shelf right here on YouTube. You could get yourself something really cool and support Linux learning at the same time. So it's a win-win. As always, thank you guys so much for supporting Linux learning. I really appreciate it. Now it's time to dive into the uname command. So let's do exactly that right now. And let's start out by taking a look at the man page for the command. Now, as you can see, there's not a ton of information here. In fact, this is one of the shortest man pages that I've seen recently. Anyway, I'm not going to bore you with this right now because what I'm going to do right now is give you some examples of this command in action. And the first example is a bit useless, but I'll let you see it anyway. What we'll do is enter uname by itself and press enter. Now, right now, it's letting us know that I'm running Linux. Now, that's not a surprise. I'm sure many of you probably guessed that. And that's why I mentioned that this particular variation of the command is somewhat useless. Next, what we're going to do is run uname-o. So let's see what kind of information we could fetch with the dash-o option. So I'll press enter. And of course, it's telling me that I'm running on, well, basically Linux. So again, not all that exciting. So what we'll do is move on to something that's actually more interesting. Now, the most common variation that you're going to see is uname-r. So what I'll do is type that in right here and press enter. So as you can see, what it's doing is printing the version string of the Linux kernel that I'm running on. I'm running on a variation of the 6.8 Linux kernel, as you can see. So this is going to be a very common option for a lot of you because when you ask for help, Maybe someone that's answering a forum post or something might ask you what version of the Linux kernel that you're running. And you can answer that question by typing uname-r. However, if I want to see even more information about the kernel, what I could do is type uname-b just like this. Now I'm not going to get into what exactly every single field means in this case. It's not really relevant to anything that we're experiencing or learning at this point in our learning journey but there's going to be some cases where this information might be helpful. For example, symmetrical multiprocessing refers to the ability to, well, have more than one processor or core, or be able to support more than one processor or core. So it's good to know that we have support for that, but for the most part, you're not going to use this as often as other options. The next variation that I wanna show you guys is uname-n. This will return the node name of our system. And in my case, it printed the name of my particular computer. Now, I don't really like to use uname-n because I think hostname is more standard for that. But even then, hostname CTL is going to be even more useful because that gives you quite a bit of information about your computer, as you can see right here. And some of the information that we see here can also be retrieved by uname. So for example, when I typed uname-r, that returned the kernel version string. And we also see that version string right here as well. Now, the only reason why I bring any of that up is because there's often more than one way of doing pretty much everything in Linux. And when it comes to printing the host name, uname-n just really isn't my go-to. So essentially all uname-n is doing is printing the host name. But you could also retrieve that by simply typing host name. It returns the exact same output. 
And again, if you want even more information about your computer than that, Postname CTL will give you even more info. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, but I wanted to take a moment and let you know that I have a brand new course available, this time covering Ansible. My new 20 episode course covers all the basics of Ansible, such as entering commands, writing playbooks, refactoring plays into roles, encrypting and decrypting files, and much more. The course is full of hands-on examples to keep you engaged, and by the end of the course, you'll be able to use Ansible in your daily workflow. In fact, I'll even cover lesser known features, such as Ansible Pull. On the screen right now is a URL you could use to go directly to the course and start learning Ansible. In each lesson, I'll break down each component into easy to understand explanations, and along the way, you'll get real experience with Ansible. In fact, with over 20 years of experience in the industry, you'll be learning Ansible the way that is actually used in real data centers. For example, I'll also teach you the basics of version control along with Ansible during this course, since it's very common that the two will be used together. So check out my course and learn Ansible. You won't regret it. Now let's get back to the video. Now another variation that I want to give you guys, and this one is fairly important, is uname-m. So let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. Now in this case, it returns x86 underscore 64. Now the reason why you might want to run this particular command is to find out what your CPU architecture is. For example, let's say you want to install or compile software on your Linux system, you might need to know what kind of processor you have on your system. It might make a difference when it comes to installing software. So if you didn't really know what kind of architecture you have on your hardware, well, what you could do is run uname-m and you'll find out. Now what I want to do is teach you guys a neat trick. You can actually combine options with the uname command, and that's not something that people generally do. Check it out. So for example, we have uname-n, which we saw earlier, that gives us our node name. And we also have uname-r, and that gives us the version string of our Linux kernel. However, we could also use those options at the same time. So as you can see, we get the node name and then the version string. Now obviously, just like with any other Linux command, it's probably easier to just combine the options together like this. You only really need one hyphen anytime you combine options with a Linux command. So what we've done here is we've only used one hyphen. We just combine the options directly together. So I'll press enter, and as you could expect, we get the exact same output. Now, one final option I want to give you with the uname command is to have it show you, well, everything. So we'll type uname and then dash A for all and press enter. And here we can see all the fields that the uname command can possibly return. There's going to be some duplicated information here, especially in the case of x86 underscore 64. But if you'd like to see everything, then just use dash A for all. So there you have it. In this video, we explored the uname command. It's a simpler command, so it was definitely something that's not going to confuse the majority of you. But every now and then, there's a simple command that's very useful, and the uname command is not something that you'll use every single day, but I do think it's something that you will use every now and then. Anyway, let me know what you thought of this tutorial, the series in general, Linux, or whatever it is you want to talk about, and bring it down to the comments down below. I can't wait to read what you guys have to say. In the meantime, though, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next video.